By the beginning of the 21st century, the Umbrella Corporation has become the largest commercial entity in the USA. Most homes use their products, and they have great political and financial influence. What the world doesn't know is that besides working on computer technology and healthcare, the company also works on military technology, genetic experimentation, and viral weaponry. Underneath Raccoon City, Umbrella Corporation has a genetic research facility called The Hive. One day, a thief tries to steal a genetically engineered T-virus and breaks the test tube, instantly contaminating the entire place through the ventilation vents. This drives the dogs used for testing mad. The facility is managed by an artificial intelligence called the Red Queen, and when her scans detect the contamination, she immediately activates the emergency protocol. The employees at first think it's just a fire drill, but soon they discover all doors are locked and they can't get out. The Red Queen releases a deadly gas to get rid of anyone she considers infected, and one of the elevators full of people falls and crashes, but the other manages to stop before an accident happens. The employees manage to force the doors open, but when a woman puts her head out, the Red Queen sees her on the cameras and activates the elevator again to kill her. In a mansion in the city, Alice wakes up in a fancy bathroom with no memory of who or where she is. The only thing she has a flashback of is passing out in the middle of her shower because of something on the wall. After putting on some clothes she wanders around the room to look for clues and finds a note about her dreams, but when she writes under it she confirms that's not her handwriting. She also finds a drawer full of weapons under an electronic lock, and a photograph of her wedding day with a man she doesn't recognize. Suddenly Alice hears a weird noise and goes outside to investigate, only to be pushed back inside by Matt. At that moment, an elite military force breaks into the house through the windows and arrests Matt even if he insists he's a cop because they can't find his name on the system. The leader James calls Alice soldier and asks for her report, but she doesn't know what he's talking about. Then the team opens a secret passage behind a wall that reveals a train that will take them to the hive. Rain fixes some wires to make it work again, and once everyone is aboard, they check a locked door to find an unconscious Spence. Alice recognizes him as the guy from the picture, and seeing him makes her remember their wedding day. When she checks her wedding ring, Alice discovers it says property of Umbrella Corporation. The team wakes Spence up but he doesn't remember anything either. Moments later, the train leaves the group at the hive. Alice demands answers, thus James explains they all work for Umbrella Corporation and that the mansion works as an emergency entrance to the hive. Spence and Alice are security operatives placed there to protect that entrance, their marriage is fake and just part of their cover to keep the hive secret. The house's security system released a nerve gas, but they don't know how long the side effects will last. This helps Alice remember that she was in the shower when a panel in the wall opened and knocked her out with the gas. The team uses special tools to force the emergency door open and breach the hive, knowing that the Red Queen is watching them. Since the elevator is broken, the team takes the stairs and discovers some lab tanks flooding the area, so they'll need to find an alternate route to the main system. James explains a few hours ago Red Queen locked the doors and killed all the employees but they don't know why, thus Umbrella Corporation sent the team to shut Red Queen down. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when they find a body floating in the lab tanks, which seems to disturb Matt in particular, and he swears he can hear weird noises coming from the ventilation shafts. Spence notices Alice is cold and lends her his jacket, when their hands brush Alice sees memories of them getting frisky together as if their thing was real. Alice wonders if Spence remembers anything, but he answers he doesn't. Once the team finds a new route they move on, and as soon as they leave, the body in the tank wakes up. Moments later, the team makes it to a room that is called Dining Room on the map, but they find mysterious machines instead, prompting Matt to point out that the corporation is probably keeping secrets down here. Alice peeks inside one of those weird machines and finds some kind of living organism, but James reminds her to move on. While a few agents stay with Matt in this room, the rest of the team makes it to the office outside Red Queen Chamber. Chad uses a computer to bypass the defense system and opens a corridor to her chamber. James and a few agents take an electrical charge explosive to the chamber to shut down the Queen, but suddenly the doors get locked again. The Queen releases a laser defense system that begins killing all the agents in the corridor, and while at first James manages to save himself by jumping out of the way, the laser multiplies itself and kills him when he falls. Chad manages to shut down the defense system again and insists they should finish the job. Alice helps him get the explosive to the chamber, where the Red Queen appears as a holographic representation of the head programmer's daughter to try to stop them. Chad ignores her and activates the explosive, instantly shutting down the Queen but also the main source of power. A backup system turns on the emergency lights, but without the Queen's defenses, all doors are now open. While Chad begins working on rebooting the Queen, Matt, Rain, and JD hear some noises in the room. Rain goes to investigate and is surprised to find a survivor, but this person suddenly jumps on her and bites her hand. JD shoots at the legs and arms and nothing happens, Rain has to shoot at the head to finally put the survivor down. During the struggle, they drop the handcuff keys and Matt picks them up while pretending to check on the blood on the ground, which is coagulated. This shouldn't be possible because blood only does that when you're dead, meaning that survivor was a zombie. At that moment, Alice, Spence, and Chad come back, and as soon as everyone turns around, the body of the survivor disappears. 
The team doesn't have time to plan what to do next because now that the doors are open, all the employees that became zombies are leaving the offices and coming after them. The agents immediately begin shooting at the zombies to keep them at bay, but a stray bullet hits one of the many weird machines and makes it explode. The impact makes Alice remember a meeting she had with Lisa, during which Alice promised her that she would get her access to the virus. The impact also hits Matt and makes him drop the keys into a hole in the floor. He has to crawl under a table and kick zombies away from him while he picks them back up, luckily he manages to grab them right before Alice takes him away. They need to find the agents, because they got separated during the explosion. Speaking of the agents, they're starting to run out of ammo, so JD uses a special code to open a door to try to escape. Unfortunately the corridor behind the door is crowded with zombies and they grab JD into the horde to kill him, Rain cries out for him as Chad and Spence drag her away before closing the door again. Meanwhile a monster known as Liquor escapes from another one of the machines. Alice begins looking for a safe exit and loses Matt on the way. Eventually she finds the labs and notices a bunch of cages with holes in their doors. Soon she discovers the dogs have become zombies too and they're now here to attack her. Alice rushes to hide in an office only to be attacked by a human zombie instead. Luckily her instincts kick in and she easily beats him up. A new memory flashes in her brain, reminding her of the training she is because she's an agent too. The zombie she defeated was a security guard, so Alice takes his gun and uses it to go after the dogs. She shoots them all until she's out of ammo, and since there's one dog left, she jumps and knocks it out with a mega kick. Meanwhile Matt makes his way to the offices and searches for the desk that belongs to Lisa. A zombie startles him when he begins hitting the windows, but Matt ignores him and starts looking through the files. At that moment, a new visitor shows up, it's Lisa, who Matt quickly approaches for a reunion, only to discover she's a zombie as well. Lisa tries to attack Matt, but suddenly Alice shows up and knocks her up with a heavy desk decoration. Seeing her face triggers the flashback again, and Alice remembers offering the virus and the access codes in exchange for a price. Matt explains that Lisa was his sister and that he isn't actually a cop, he got a fake ID to infiltrate the hive. The siblings knew that Umbrella Corporation was doing illegal research of the viral and genetic kind and they wanted to expose them to the press. Lisa was supposed to steal a sample of the virus with the help of a contact that would sell her the access codes, but she never made it. Matt thinks she was set up, and Alice wonders if she was the one that betrayed Lisa, but she doesn't tell Matt she was the contact. Afterward, Alice and Matt run to the Queen's chamber where the agents are currently hiding, closing the door behind them right before the zombies catch up. This office is a dead end because there are zombies behind every door, and Spence proposes they could wait here until backup arrives. Unfortunately this isn't possible, the blast doors they pass through on their way in from the mansion close after an hour, so if they don't make it out before then they never will because containing the contamination is the top priority. Alice decides they should turn the Red Queen on again since she's the only one that knows how to get out of here. Chad hesitantly does as she asks and the Red Queen immediately gets in contact with them. She explains the T-Virus was created with military applications in mind, and that it can reanimate dead bodies with a small electrical charge to the brain. These zombies only want to feed, and destroying their heads is the only way to kill them. The T-Virus can be transmitted through blood transmission, meaning just a scratch or a bite is enough to become a zombie too. The Red Queen considers Rain to be infected and doesn't want to let her leave, making Rain furious, but Alice threatens with shutting down the Queen again if she doesn't help. The Queen reveals a hidden door into the maintenance tunnels. After a few minutes of wandering around, Spence feels like they're going in circles, but Rain reminds him this is the only route they have. Suddenly a bunch of zombies begins flooding the tunnels, and Alice fights them hand to hand while the rest of the group begins climbing on the pipes to get away. Rain freezes when she sees JD in the horde, but he turns out to be a zombie too and bites her, so Rain has to shoot him to kill him for good. Once everyone is up on the pipes, Alice tries to check Rain's wounds, but she swears she's fine. The group begins carefully walking on the pipes to find an exit while the zombies try to reach them from below. Rain, Matt, and Spence enter a tunnel safely, but when Alice and Chad are about to cross, the pipe breaks. Alice jumps and Matt and Space grab her just in time, pulling her back while she kicks the zombies away from her. Unfortunately Chad falls in the middle of the horde, and while Alice shoots a few zombies to allow him to climb onto a different pipe, trying to save him would be too dangerous. Chad tells them to go without him, and after the group leaves, he considers ending things for himself. He changes his mind and uses his last bullet to shoot a zombie, telling the monsters they'll have to fight for their meal before crawling into a hole. Moments later, the group reaches the lab area with no issues, although they need to help Rain to walk as she begins to throw up. Alice freezes when memories flood her mind and remembers something extremely important, the scientists had made the virus but also a cure. She tells Matt she knows all this because she was going to steal the virus and she was Lisa's contact, but she isn't sure that she was the one that betrayed her too. Alice looks for the cure in a flooded office, but unfortunately all the containers are empty. Entering this area is triggering Spence's memory as well. He had been spying on Alice when she talked to Lisa and he learned she would betray Umbrella. On the day of the plan, he distracted Alice by convincing her to get frisky together. Then Spence left the note to make it look romantic, but while Alice slept, 
He sneaked into the hive to steal both the virus and the cure. He was the one that broke one of the test tubes. In the present, Alice notices Spence is acting weird and gets suspicious, especially when he finds a gun on a table. Spence gets to it before Alice can and aims it at the group as he asks Alice to come with him. He thinks they can sell the virus and the cure and gets a rich life out of it, but Alice turns him down, explaining she only wanted to steal the virus to stop Umbrella, not to promote their business. Spence thinks Alice and the siblings are very naive for thinking they can stop such a mega corporation, and when Rain asks, Spence confesses the virus and the cure are hidden in the train. Suddenly a zombie comes out of the water and bites Spence, but he quickly kills her with a few shots, then he leaves the lab and locks the door to trap the group. At that moment the Red Queen gets in contact with them and reveals she's already taken care of it. Spence makes his way back to the train and finds the box he hid there earlier, but when he's about to inject himself with the cure, he's found by the liquor, who immediately kills him. The Red Queen shows the attack on the lab screen and explains the liquor had been one of the corporation's early experiments, produced by injecting the T-virus directly into living tissue. The result had been very unstable, but now that the liquor has consumed fresh DNA, it'll mutate and become stronger. The Red Queen can give them the code to open the door, but she'll only do so if they kill Rain first because she's been infected for too long for the cure to work. Rain asks Alice to do it because one death is better than three, and her pleas become more urgent when the mutated liquor shows up outside the lab, hitting the door repeatedly. Alice grabs an emergency axe from the wall but instead of hitting Rain, she destroys the screen the Red Queen was using to talk to them. Suddenly the power goes out in the entire hive and the lab door opens to reveal Chad, who shut down the queen like they promised they would do if she didn't help. At that moment the liquor finally breaks the glass, so the group runs through the door until they make it back to the train. When Alice approaches Spence's body, he wakes up as a zombie and tries to attack her, but Alice easily kills him with the axe before dropping her ring. The group gets to escape on the train, and Chad and Rain get an injection with the cure. Then Rain gives Alice her watch, which indicates they only have 8 minutes left to leave this place before she passes out. For a moment Alice thinks Rain died and she grabs the gun in case she'll turn, but Rain opens her eyes again and assures her she's fine. Suddenly the train begins shaking, it's the liquor trying to make its way inside. By pawing at the walls it manages to scratch Matt, then it tears off the outer door of the control room to kill Chad. Matt immediately closes the inner door that separates them from the control room, but the liquor climbs to the back of the train and pushes down the last door to enter. Alice shoots it a few times but it isn't enough, and the liquor grabs her leg with its tongue as Matt hits it with a bunch of pipes. This hit isn't enough to hurt it either, but at least now Alice can use a pipe to stab the liquor's tongue and trap it. At that moment, Rain finally turns into a zombie too and attacks Matt. After some struggle, Matt manages to push her away and shoots her in the head, then he opens the floor door to release the liquor on the train tracks, causing it to catch on fire. Alice grieves for Rain before grabbing the box with the cure and leaving the train with Matt, reaching the mansion right before the doors get locked again. Now they are safe, Alice allows herself to have a breakdown full of guilt over failing her friends. Matt tries to convince her it isn't her fault, but he suddenly begins feeling lots of pain from his injury. Alice gets ready to inject him with the cure but all of a sudden, a group of Umbrella scientists arrives. They notice Matt is mutating and take him away to be used in the Nemesis program, Alice tries to fight for him but she's knocked out and sent to quarantine. Alice is taken to the Raccoon City Hospital while a mysterious voice announces they're reopening the hive to investigate what happened there. Sometime later, Alice wakes up on an examination table connected to a weird machine. After tearing off all the wires from her body, she asks for help, yet nobody replies. The security cameras are still on, but there's only a shadow passing by. Alice uses a syringe with her blood to force the electronic lock open and escapes the room only to discover the rest of the hospital is empty as well. When she makes it outside, Alice discovers Raccoon City has become an apocalyptic wasteland. Newspapers reveal zombies are on the loose, so Alice retrieves a shotgun from a police car, ready to survive her next adventure. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.